Getting started with editor scripting. The Unity Editor is a powerful tool which allows you, the developers and designers, to author and build your game visually and tweak existing parameters through the inspector. Because the editor is a general purpose tool, sometimes it may not fit your specific development needs. Luckily, Unity allows you to extend the editor and create additional tools to help your workflow. These extensions can commonly be found as gizmos and scene tools, which allow you to visualize and manipulate data directly in your scene, or as property drawers and custom editors, which directly change how the editor looks and behaves. Unity 2019 introduced UI Toolkit, formerly known as UI Elements. UI Toolkit is a retained mode UI framework for Unity, which is composed of three different components. The c -sharp Visual Elements API, which allows you to reference the UI and provide additional functionality. UI Documents, which uses Unity Extensible Markup Language to provide the structure of the UI. And Unity Style Sheet, or USS, a subset of CSS which provides styling. In this project, Unity Royale, we will be implementing a custom property drawer that will display a read-only health field of a unit and a custom editor window using UI Toolkit. Creating a custom property drawer. Property drawers are reusable attributes which can manipulate a field's display and behavior by simply embedding the attribute onto a variable in our code. Unity provides some common property drawers, such as the range attribute, which provides a slider-like function with a min and max value for any numerical field, such as ints and floats. Property drawers are composed of two major parts, the attribute that is associated with the variable and its accompanying property drawer editor script. We created a disable float attribute CS file in our attributes directory with a class that simply inherits from the property attribute class. We also created an accompanying editor script called disabled property drawer.cs, which can be found in the editor directory. When implementing custom property drawers, it's important to note that we must override create property GUI and on GUI functions because the Unity editor uses both UI Toolkit and a legacy version called Immediate GUI or IM GUI. Not all inspectors or custom editor tools will use UI Toolkit and vice versa. So for now, it's best to implement both functions such that the intended behavior stays consistent no matter which UI mode is being used. In Create Property GUI, we retrieve the serialized property's float value and construct a float field with the value. We then disable the float field by calling setEnabled function and passing a false value as its parameter. In the onGUI override, we simply create a float field using the editor GUI API and pass the rectangle and serialized properties float value. We disable the GUI before our float field function and enable the GUI after to achieve the same effect. When we select the barrack tower red, we'll see that the field will be disabled. If we comment out the onGUI function in our disabled float property drawer, we will receive a message shown in our inspector which will state that no GUI has been implemented. Creating an editor window with UI Toolkit. To try out the UI Toolkit version, we will need to implement a custom editor script. We've created a custom editor script called Thinking Placeable Inspector, which can be found in the editor directory. This custom editor script derives from the editor class and targets the thinking placeable mono behavior via a custom editor attribute. We override the onCreateInspector function and implement a generic form of drawing an inspector by iterating through the serialized object and drawing all properties as a property field. To determine that we are using UI Toolkit, we can open up the UI Toolkit debugger by selecting Window, UI Toolkit, Debugger. This debugger is similar to your web browser's element debugger and allows you to select an element, view its hierarchy structure, and its associated properties. We must first select the Pick Element button at the top of the window so we can hover over the inspector. Unity will highlight the element you are hovering over in blue. When we highlight and click the Hit Points field, we can see that it's using a property field, and its parent is specifically a visual element, which is part of UI Toolkit. 
an I am GUI inspector will show up as an I am GUI container in the debugger. While custom property drawers are simple and can be used on many variables, we can define a more specific workflow by overriding the inspector or creating a custom editor window. For example, let's say we wanted to develop a card editor for our team. This card editor will show all the available cards in our project in a single window. This makes it easy so that if a teammate places new cards in a different directory, we can still find all the cards we need to edit through our editor window. Defining structure with a UI document. Let's start with defining the structure of our card editor window. The window will be composed of two columns, with the first column being a list and the second column being split into two rows. One will be for our card image preview, while the other will show the data inside the card data scriptable object. This is how we will structure our UI document file. To create the file, right-click in the project view and select UI Toolkit UI Document. We created our file under the editor folder in the project and named it Card Editor Window. To structure our window in two columns, we first create a list view entry and provide a name called Card List. We create a box element and call it card. We also add two children elements, with the first element being an image called preview, and the second element being a scroll view called card info scroll. It's important that we provide unique names so that we can style and query for specific elements in our style sheet and the visual element API. While the UI document will define the layout of our editor window, it will not actually create the editor window. We can create the editor window using an editor script called cardeditorwindow.cs that is located in the editor directory of the project. In this script, we construct a window and use the onEnableMessage callback to initialize our UI document. We use the Asset Database API to find our UI document file by supplying its path and adding the structure provided by the UI document to our root visual element. With this initial step, when we open the card editor window found in the Tools menu, we'll get a blank window. Although we defined the structure of our window through UI document, the style of the window has not been defined. This is because the style of the window is defined by the style sheet. Testing styling with the debugger. Before we implement the style sheet, let's look at the UI Toolkit debugger. This debugger is similar to your web browser's element debugger and allows you to select elements and view their properties. By clicking the Pick Element button in the debugger, we can select and view the properties currently associated with our card editor window. In the left panel of the debugger, we can see the structure defined in the UI document. When selecting an element in the tree hierarchy, we can view the properties in the panel to the right of the hierarchy. By clicking the Show All button, we can view all associated properties. Let's select the List View element and change its width to 225 pixels. It's pretty difficult to see what 225 pixels looks like, but we can show our layout by clicking the Show Layout button next to our Pick Element button in the debugger. This will provide a green outline on the selected element. Changes done in the UI Toolkit debugger are only temporary, but it lets you experiment with the style before implementing the style directly into a style sheet. Defining styles using the Unity style sheet. When we're done modifying styles in the debugger, we can define our styles in the style sheet. You can create a style sheet by right-clicking in the project view and selecting UI Toolkit Style Sheet. We named our style sheet Card Editor Styles, which is located in the editor folder with these defined properties. Assign properties to specific names and identifiers using the hashtag symbol. Define class properties with a dot and define types by using the exact name of the type without any special characters. To load our style sheet, in our Card Editor Window CS script, we find our style sheet using Asset Database and assign our style sheet to the root visual elements style sheet variable. Creating the list view. To create the list view, we have to provide functionality in our editor script that will extend the structure defined in our UI document. In our create card list view function, 
we first find all cards. This is a helper function which uses Asset Database to search for all assets with a type called card data. We then query for a list named card list so we can manipulate the list view and populate it with elements. As we have only one element named card list, we can grab the first element found in the query. It is important to note that we query for types known in UI Toolkit. In our UI document, we defined our element to use a list view. Therefore, in our editor code, we must query for a list view type. We supply our list view with the cards we found and provide bindings that will show each card's name in each element of the list view. We define the list's selection type so we can only select one element at a time. When we select an element in the listen, we must provide a selection change functionality so that we can draw our card preview and all the serialized fields in the card data scriptable object. The onSelectionChange event will provide a collection of Unity objects we can iterate through. First, we query for our card info box element and clear its contents. This is because we will be reusing the same box element to display the serialized properties of the card data scriptable object. We cast each Unity object into the card data type and construct a serialized object of it. This allows us to iterate through each serialized property and display it on our editor window. We must bind each property field to our card data scriptable object, so any changes done on the editor window will affect the associated card data scriptable object. We check if the serialized property's name is card image so we can read the sprite's texture and display it in our preview image element. This will update our image preview if we select a new sprite in the card image field. This is done with a helper function called load card image. We call the same function at the end of our while loop in case there isn't a change in the card image field, so we can display the card image into our preview element. Finally, we call this entire function in on enable so we can apply these changes to our editor window. By creating a custom editor window, we can define a custom workflow that suits our team's needs and helps expedite our process. UI Toolkit provides an extensible and responsive editor UI that scales well for complex needs. To see samples of how certain elements will look in Unity, open Window, UI Toolkit, Samples. These samples will provide a preview and implementation of specific elements in the editor. In addition, we also highly recommend visiting the links provided in the description below to learn more about UI Toolkit. Thanks for watching.